every once in a while, an antagonist comes along that is just straight up bone chilling. Think Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, the Joker from The Dark Knight, or Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men. Or the topic of today's video, Leon the Professional's Norman Stansfield. But what truly makes an antagonist great is when their chilling behavior is combined with deep layers, symbolism, and hidden meaning. This is no doubt the case with corrupt and power-hungry DEA agent Norman Stansfield. Written by Luc Besson, Norman Stansfield's character embodies a unique blend of brutality, madness, corruption, addiction, and obsession, and is infused with the aforementioned symbolism and hidden meaning. Let's explore. Take even his name for example. This is not a random character name, but is a name with some hidden meaning. I believe the name Norman was specifically chosen due to its akinness to the word normal. In this sense, the name Norman has some subliminal innuendo through its contrast to the juxtaposed idea of a normal man. The wordplay works because Norman Stansfield, of course, is the polar opposite of normal. Stansfield is a psychopath in the true sense of the word and has some of the most ruthless, bizarre, and unpredictable behavior you'll see on the big screen. What I found particularly unsettling about Stansfield's behavior was his ability to find complete, intimate comfortability in, and seemingly take ownership of, one's personal space. This is on display during his encounters with both Matilda and her father. Next, what I think was brilliant regarding Stansfield's character was the choice to make him a fanatic of classical music. If you've ever studied classical music, you may realize the deep parallels he shares with the composition of classical music as opposed to modern popular music. To explain these parallels, I'd like to briefly tell you about the German philosopher Theodor Adorno. Stay with me here. Adorno heavily criticized popular music. He argued that popular music is characterized by standardization. Adorno emphasized the dull nature and predictability of the verse, bridge, chorus structure of modern songs. Adorno argued that, because of this standardized composition, we have already pre-consumed the music because we know what to expect. Now, contrast that with classical music, which Adorno points out, is filled with unpredictable ups, downs, highs and lows, different tones, emotional crescendos, and most importantly, doesn't follow a set structure. In classical music, you never know what is coming next. Thus, Norman Stansfield is the perfect embodiment of classical music. Stansfield, who we've already pointed out is anything but normal or standard, is, like classical music, unpredictable. You never know what he's going to do next. And like classical music, he showcases a wide range of emotions within mere minutes of each other. One minute he can ramp up, burst and explode, and moments later can be calm, soft, graceful, and intimate. Accordingly, Stansfield conducts his raids to the makeup of classical music, even mentioning to Matilda's father that he prefers the overtures and the rush, thrill, and excitement and unexpectedness that accompany them. Moving on, Stansfield serves a very fulfilling and unique purpose for the sake of this film. He is a catalyst for one of the film's central themes, which is the blurry line between good and evil. Consider the fact that Leon the Professional, like some other films, is ironically backwards. Backwards in the sense that the protagonist, Leon, is a hitman, when typically the hitman is your prototypical bad guy or antagonistic character. Likewise, it would be the DEA police agent who should be the protagonist or good guy. But of course, Stansfield is far from that. Because of the vile, dehumanizing nature of Leon's work, Busson has to work hard to humanize Leon. Accordingly, Leon is shown to have a code. No women, no kids, right? Right. A sense of morality and a protective fatherly instinct. 
This, of course, allows the audience to view Léon in a favorable light. But now, Busson is tasked to work even harder to paint Stansfield, the law enforcement figure who should be good, as bad. And of course, Stansfield appears rotten to the core, doing things like murdering innocent children. But two very interesting ways that Busson made Stansfield appear as truly evil is by one, giving him a lack of backstory, and two, the nature of his drug abuse. Regarding his lack of backstory first, we the audience don't know what events in his life led him to break bad, become corrupt, and turn to drug abuse. It would be an interesting idea to have a character study on him, similar to Todd Phillips' Joker, to enlighten us on the backstory of Norman Stansfield. However, with regards to Leon the Professional, the lack of backstory was done purposely, because if there was a backstory, it may allow us to feel empathy towards Norman, the same way one could empathize with the Joker in the movie Joker. For the audience to truly view Stansfield as evil, there must be no sympathetic element to him. Thus, aside from his psychopathic and sadistic episodes, the film tells us very little about Stansfield. One tidbit of insight into Stansfield's complex psychological makeup is that we know he takes Librium pills, and Librium capsules are used for treatment of severe anxiety, which may occur in association with insomnia or personality and behavioral disorders. In my opinion, Stansfield may not only be a psychopath, but in lieu of his drug use, Stansfield seemingly has multiple personalities. Now, I just mentioned that one of the ways Busson made him appear evil is through the nature of his drug use. When he pops his medication, he uncontrollably convulses in a seemingly possessed manner, giving him a demonic quality, which again furthers the notion of his evil, devilish nature and helps him take on a perhaps different, more crude and ruthless alternate persona. Gary Oldman's portrayal captures this dichotomy brilliantly, showcasing Stansfield's ability to switch between a seemingly polite, relaxed demeanor to a deranged, unhinged state of mind. So we get it. Stansfield is evil. But there is a moment, however, when Norman and Matilda are in the bathroom, when Matilda mentions that Stansfield killed her brother, we see an almost hurt, self-disgusted, and even a sense of remorse on Stansfield's face. And this begs the question, is there a hint of humanity left in him? Shortly after this remorseful look, he quickly switches back to his vile self, asking Matilda if she wants to join her brother, going literally from what looks like remorseful to remorseless, cementing the fact that you literally never know what you're going to get from this character. This character is abnormal, unlike his name Norman. He is unpredictable and emotionally diverse, like the classical music he loves. And for the sake of this film, like his devilish possessed convulsions, is the epitome of evil and psychopathy. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.